Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's FPV podcast. We got a really interesting character going on here. We met him at Dover. He's part of the uh, Free Sky Empire or FR Sky, depending on how you want to talk about it. And uh, before we introduce him, though, Elvin, say hello. Hello, everybody. I hope y'all enjoying y'all time of the year. It's fun outside. I just got in from the pool. Got to go swimming, 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 swimming. Got to go swimming. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where's Dory? Okay. You done? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you are a funny man. <laughs> oh, Sven, it's a good day. can you please... It's a please... good day to be me, man. It's a good day to be me. Sven, can you please introduce yourself? How's it going, guys? I'm Sven. Sven Tusak. Um, I work for Free Sky. I do marketing and uh, sometimes technical support for them. That is pretty cool. He's over in the SoCal area, and we got to meet yeah. him at Dover. And he told us a lot of interesting things, so we wanted to invite him onto the podcast and share it with the rest of you all. Sven, yeah, he works, I gotta, he works for that cool company. He, he does work for that cool company. It's kind of mysterious, right? Because they're a really big part of the FPV community, but like yeah. you hardly hear anything from them. So that's why we're really well, interested in hearing from you. Well, that's because a lot of people don't know, you know how to pronounce the name, so... I mean, legitimately, what do you, what, I mean, what is it? I mean, is it FR <laughs> Sky, Free Sky, Fry Sky, what, what, what is it? That was the first question I actually, I asked. I like, how do you say it and what, what does it mean? Right. Uh, there goes the iPad again. <laughs> so, um, I guess basically what it, it, it represents, uh, abbreviates free. FR is free and uh-huh. sky. So like the sky should be free. Right. Basically. You know, it's based on this open source software that anybody can program on the transmitter, OpenTX. So it's that's right. what Free Sky represents. Yes, right. I got it right. TV. So it's Free Sky, but you could say FR Sky. That's not offensive or anything. You know <laughs> what? What's funny is I started off with Free Sky because I just ha- I don't know, it just came out of my mouth. And then people convinced me it was FR Sky, so I started saying that. <laughs> and then I meet Sven, and he calls it Free Sky. I'm like, darn it, I got it right the first time, but I got converted. Right. Yeah. See, so, like, like naturally it comes out as Free Sky, so right. it really it is Free Sky. Okay. It, it, it's, it's a cool name, you know, and that, that yeah. I was, we were tripping at uh, Dover. You were showing us the how the, the symbol is is shaped you know it's kind of like a a, a a meter kind of thing right yeah r with uh like radio bars on it yeah for a meter yeah. yeah yeah okay and, yeah. and they, they start they do the steps so yeah so you see good <laughs> it's gradually becoming better right ah I yeah got you. The, the r yeah. is the best reception right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so okay. i understand yeah, now. i guess yeah. there's a little bit a lot of symbolism <laughs> there Right. <laughs> Pretty cool. All right. But so yeah, um, go ahead. They're all basically in China, in Wuxi, China. Um, so I'm the first employee outside of Wuxi, China, to be part of Free Sky, and I'm here in Southern California. Yeah, which is pretty cool because we finally got somebody that we can talk to. So uh, thank you for coming on. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, tell us a little bit about your background because uh, for anybody watching the video. He has lots and lots of toys behind him. His man cave is pretty cool. Yeah, he's, he's deep <laughs> in the cave. Yeah, I mean, I've always been into RC. Well, probably like since I was like eight years old or something. Like I first got one of those Tyco. You remember Tyco RC? Uh-huh. They had little cars. that had the mini aero hopper. And yep. I got one of those. And like I was just hooked. I like I need a real RC. And so I got like uh what is it? The Tamiya, the Monster Beetle. Oh yeah, like yeah, yeah. Birthday, the Monster Beetle. Yeah, and that was that I was it. It's that over, thing. huh? I, it was over. Yeah, so I was in love from an early age, you know. And then I started. I just I did everything, you know, surface boats and stuff like that. I really didn't get into planes or helicopters because, you know, who has that kind of money when they're that young, you know? So I just stuck with the ground vehicles, and. Um, that was my love for RC, and then it just kind of got on the back burner as uh-huh. I went to school and tried to do a career, which was, um, I basically, um, I started to work in the film industry as a mm-hmm. camera assistant, so a camera technician. I'd be on set and do, you know, like, 
work on the camera and make sure it's in focus and just everything with the film industry. So I started, basically I got stuck in that world for about 15 years. It's a long time. <laughs> That's wow. a career right there. It's a there. long time. Yeah. It's a career. It's freelance, you know, so you never know when your next gig is, but you also have a lot of time to do hobbies. So mm. I had money and I started to have a lot more money and I decided I wanted to try helicopters. So oh, I've always wanted RC helicopters and anybody has tried that knows that it's a huge pit. Right. It's a so, money burn right there. <laughs> it's like throwing money away. Well, I mean, it, come on now. It's not it's, that bad. It's yeah, bad. it's not that bad. It's it's fun, but it's all expensive and time consuming yeah. hobby to say the least. And then if, if you think practicing is important with quads, it's four times more practicing needed, right? Yeah. 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 Like just to uh, hover is a workout, you know? Right. This you, is like you're mentally tired after hovering for five minutes. Yeah, this is back with the fly bars and just one gyro. That's all you yeah. got, you know? <laughs> yeah. I just installed the beast X on my my uh oh. my T Rex five hundred, so nice. Um I, I'm getting used to it. Yeah. Get yeah. used to that the first time you've trying? Yeah, fly it's barless. actually my first fly barless setup. Like I, I bought this fly, this T Rex five hundred when they first came out. Yeah. And converted it from, you know, what it was to from fly bar to fly barless. So this is my first first fly barless setup. And uh it's flying and it flies pretty good. I'm just not confident, you know, yet. Not not yeah. ready to let loose yet. But I, <laughs> other guys can, right? Yeah. Was it easy to set up or was it like different? It, it was easy to set up because, you know, like me, I like to cheat, yeah. right? So like hook it to the computer. Yeah. <laughs> That's the part yeah. I like. You know, hook it <laughs> to the good. computer. A lot of the yeah, setup yeah. was already, main setup so, was already done. So, you know, I did oh, put the good. other setup. So after you got uh, into helis, when did you decide yeah. to get over <laughs> to uh, mini quads and FPV? It's probably... Uh, probably a good year or two after, like when there was like a Gowie quad that came out a little while, like a long time ago. It was the like Gowie three thirty. Gowie, yeah, yep. Gowie three thirty. I got one of those, and I you know like, I slapped my GoPro one on it, you know, and I fell in love with just like aerial cinematography, and that's when um, I met another guy in the film industry. His name was Rio. Um, he was working as a cinematographer and uh, we we're working on movies together and on some TV show we were working together on, we decided to order blackout quads. This is when the blackout first came out. Um, so yeah. we ordered those and we started flying those things and we just totally fell in love, freaked out when the first time I did FPV, uh, I couldn't believe myself. I was like terrified because you know, doing line of sight for so long and always imagining wanting to be in there and then actually being able to do that. It was, it was terrifying. Mm. It's a little but hard the first time, isn't it? It's like, it Oh is. man, I just, lose, <laughs> you just lose all perspective and you're like, Oh, oh okay. What's going on? Can I do this? Yeah. And then you start to get used to your bearings, FPV. And it, it, it just, from then on I was hooked. So, Rio and I, the guy that I worked with, um, we were in love with this. So we would fly together and we would chase each other around. And I think this was a time when um, that France video came out with uh, them racing through the forest. You remember that? Yeah. 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 The, yeah. Star uh, Wars, the Star Pods. Yeah. yeah. That was and the we French like, guys. We got it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Argonne guys. So we did that. We... Um, we did the same thing. We, we decided to just race each other. And we did like videos, aerial GP. We have a couple of videos on YouTube. And we got some good responses. You know, a lot of people interested. And, mm -hmm. you know, what is this? We need more of this. And like we saw the demand. So we started Aerial Grand Prix. Um, basically, we wanted to start like a racing league and uh -huh. racing things. You know, we didn't have any race experience or anything. We just were camera guys with drones, you know? Right. So we thought it was a cool thing to do. <laughs> so we just kind of organized it, you know? We we came up with some rules. We designed some gates 
electrical noodle gates, you know, that you can make mm -hmm. out of PVC. And we discovered if you just stick them in the ground and arc them, they'll stay up, you know. Right. Some pool noodles over them for visibility and that, protection. That, those were those were the first <laughs> first uh, first gates I saw. That, yep. that was those, your your gates was the first gates I saw. Those I was like, what the hell? Oh, dude, that's so easy <laughs> to make. You know. Yeah. I, yeah, I've actually thrown away pipe from from you know that I've I've had for six, five five years. Yeah. Just I just threw away some pipes today from from that <laughs> from that long ago. Yeah, yeah, from that long ago. Hey, that's yeah. tried and true yeah. technology right there. It's still going yeah. strong, man. Yeah, it works. It's still being used now. You know, like a lot of them are changing to square now. You know, because a uh, multi GPs doing the square, which you know it's cool too. Just a different look, you mm -hmm. know. I don't know. I don't know what do you prefer, round like arc gates or square gates. I what is, makes more sense. Not, I'm, I'm a ground know. scraper, so uh, for me, yeah. it's uh, it's all about durability. You give me the one that's more durable, that's the one I'm gonna take yeah. because I hate right. replacing those things. That's true. And simplicity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mine. I just you just gotta spend five bucks for a new pipe. That's it. <laughs> And some pool noodles, maybe. Yeah. Yep. PVC pipe pool noodles. Uh, get them now while they're cheap because uh, summer's going away and everything's on discount. Of course. Right. Yeah, <laughs> everything's always on discount. So, okay. <laughs> Started Aerial GP. Enough. And uh, we'll catch up with you on that. So, is that when you yeah. were just really, really into F FPV and uh, drones at that point? Was that like the pinnacle? Uh, yeah. It was just like um, our hobby, you know? So, that's. We did a YouTube thing because YouTube was was like the cool thing to do. <laughs> and so and also, I guess flight test was a huge influence on us. We saw oh, flight yeah. test and we're like, uh, these guys are having fun flying planes and just making videos. Right. I'm jealous, you know. <laughs> right. Hey, you know what? They make a good living and they're having a lot of fun. Yeah. So you can't really, you know, you can't knock that. No, you no. can't. So, yeah, we wanted to try it and just see, you know, as a hobby. And then I guess from there, we just started, um, yeah, we did regulations. Um, so a lot of people around the world, like, contacted us. Uh, like, they wanted to start aerial Grand Prix leagues. So, like, people, like, in Europe, we had a bunch of people in China, like, just all over the place, they contacted us. Um, so we designed really good um, specs and classes and regulations so we did a whole booklet and everything and um basically where did we go from there we went our first race was in um apollo 11 field down here in van nuys california uh -huh. that's, that's a, a pretty cool popular place. field yeah it's a huge huge rc field so we did our first race there i think it was in 2014 um yeah 2014 uh, what was the date? I don't even remember. But it was like September 2014. We did it out there. And basically, like 30 people showed up. We set up, you know, those pool noodles out in the heli part of the field because they did, they considered us heli guys. You know, they didn't want us near the planes. Right. <laughs> so we actually, it was weird. That summer, the field burnt down because a jet crashed and burnt down part of the the natural field in the back over there. So wow. it was all burnt out. It looked all like an apocalypse over there. <laughs> <laughs> so we jets. had a race out there in this post-apocalyptic art field. field. Burnt down from a jet. That's so, pretty crazy. Yeah, we had a bunch of fun. We were like, yeah, it was pretty pretty crazy. Um, but people showed up. You know, they, they knew it was going to be a cool thing. There was like 30 pilots or so. That showed up a lot of the local guys that still fly now um so we did a race we just did stopwatch you know just old school way no and that's pretty cool like this is 2014 like fun. most people yeah. most people didn't start till 2015 and 16 so like you were really Definitely. at the you know at the very beginning of fpv racing at that point right yeah yeah i think yeah we were really there wasn't a lot of people doing it out there back then Cause I, I remember when the guy we came out too, you know, and it was yeah. like, 
It was like, the, you got all excited, and I was like, get that <laughs> crap out of here. I, mean, thing, I, I saw it crash, and I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. Don't well, get this... me wrong. I thought it was a piece of crap. <laughs> it was a piece of crap. Like, <laughs> the design sucked. You know, the right. mic controller was horrible. It, like, wobbled like it was yeah. on the top. I couldn't get it dialed in, really, but it was, like, hands off flying though you know right 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 so, it was it it did fly it did fly <laughs> it did fly it yeah just, compared to a heli well. it flew like amazing right yeah, right right without any effort it's kind of like it cheating like the phantom <laughs> phantom you know the, the phantom one flew well but yeah. the Phantom four flies way better oh yeah you know, way now better things things have gotten way better like you know, guys, I was just telling somebody, Swin, that, yeah. um, you know, you knew the new guys don't don't understand what we went through. You know? <laughs> they have oh, yeah. no clue, like running around with a USB ASP adapter in your pocket and, you you know, USB cables, <laughs> and, you know, your full laptop, you know, oh, oh yeah. man, I miss I, I got to reprogram something. You know, it, it was it was oh, yeah. hell. But you know, yeah, you guys, you guys. The KK two board was the one I got. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, KK two board. Yeah, KK two yeah. board. Right. I it's built okay. a tricopter out of that because I saw David Windestall's tricopter. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, oh man, I need a tricopter. Yeah, that was that was crazy. And How? then you built yeah. it, and you figured out how hard it was. It's like, nah, I don't think I need a tricopter. <laughs> <laughs> that was a pain. I did figure out how complex that servo mechanism is, and it froze up on me, and it just did a death spiral, and I was like, okay, let's go back to quads for now. <laughs> yeah, let's go back to something that's a little bit easier, but not that yeah. much at that point, though. I mean, everything was no, no. kind of, like, really hacked together at that point in 2014. Yeah. It was, and it was a lot of fiberglass, too, you know? Yeah. <laughs> everything. Yeah, that was, that was it. Like, Harley... G10. Nobody had carbon fr- fiber flame frames. It was yeah. It was G10. Everybody was running around yeah. with G10 and polycarbonate. Remember, when guys was running <laughs> polycarbonate yeah. frames. You know, the the little guys still <laughs> run that. You know that the, the little yeah. the, the real micro micros. The, the, That's true. The 85 and 90 millimeters. Some of those guys they still run the the polycarbonate frames, and they work great for that size. No, they're good. And what, like the TVS, right? The Discovery, wasn't that also like a fiberglass frame? That like that originally was, was, yeah, that originally was yeah. a G10, yeah, black, uh, or G11, which is the, the one that you can't burn. It's got the fire, oh, yeah. and fire uh, stuff in it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it was like Trappy and like. David Windestall, like those were the guys that were really doing multi rotors back then, you know. Right. And they were doing big, big stuff, you know. Not a lot of people doing the small stuff. No, right. uh, yeah, definitely. The start yeah. of it was let's put a camera on there and take cool video and photos. Yeah. And <laughs> then at what? It's, it's and then like, I saw. Um, yeah, like I think the blackout was like the first head turner, in my opinion. That people yeah. started seeing is like, okay, like carbon fiber, small, yeah. agile, this is going to work. A lot of guys don't know that, that Armaton had started back at that time. When the blackout came out, Armaton really? was, right, was like, right, like, there's a, on RC groups, if you go look on RC groups right now. I got to check that out. Yeah. There's, if you go look at um, Bob Bob Bofin, Bob Bob Bofin, uh, I can't remember how you pronounce his his yeah. uh, tag name, but if you go look at him, like me and him are talking, right? And he's talking about designing the frame, and then the blackout comes comes out. He's already cutting frames in in uh, China for for Armaton, and they just cut, they haven't figured out the name of the company. It was like. I'm cutting these things for this company, but we haven't. We don't know what to call a company. And then Armaton came out, and there you <laughs> go. And that's history. Yeah, yeah that's history. That's so. That's cool. sometimes a question on how you say that name, Armaton. So it's Armaton. Yeah, I think Not I, I Arm, believe Arm it's. Arm it, Arm <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Armand. <Nobody did. laughs> Somebody's gonna get angry with know. us <laughs> over in chat. I was like, yeah. what? Uh, I, 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 love, I, I love their frame. Yeah, I got their yeah, frame. Yeah, I, I, I got one. <laughs> it's my favorite frame right now, the chameleon right now. I don't, I don't have a chameleon, but I got I got yeah. a F41B. Oh, uh, nice. F, F14, F14B. Yeah, I got one of those, and I, I love it. It's it, I, I bounced that off of a few cars. <laughs> <laughs> it is a tank, and the warranties sure. are always great. Right. Yeah, you can't beat that. Yeah, but cool. so you 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 fly you fly an Armaton, and then you were uh, flying following what trapping them were doing. What what came after that? Uh, I guess like pilots started coming out of the woodwork. You know, like I remember first watching Metal Danny, uh -huh. first video going through the forest, and like, damn, this guy is going so fast through this forest. Um, so we had like a good relationship with Europe. So we actually did um, our first big race in Austria. Uh, so we had uh, a guy in Austria who was kind of a partner of Aerial GP at the time. Mm -hmm. So we did our first race there. We did it in conjunction with um, DJI. Uh, this is basically, let me back up first. So my partner Rio, that was part of Aerial GP, got a job from DJI mm. um, as a director slash editor. But the only catch was that he had to go to China to work ah. there at the headquarters. So he took the job. You know, it's a great job. It's, you know, why not? Get that money, money. <laughs> so, yeah, we tried to – so we did basically Aerial GP for a long time while he was in China and I was here. So, you know, a whole lot of – Skype calls and stuff like that. So yeah, <laughs> it's always about the Skype man when you have to go yeah. call back to China because it's free and it's you know free. it works yeah. and it works well. <laughs> WeChat is all they use in China. A lot of WeChat. Oh right? yes. yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah so WeChat. I yeah, do a lot of I went back there. It's like WeChat is like basically Facebook oh. in China. It's right. Crazy. It's crazy. They you do like you can pay with it. You can do everything with it. It's like mind-boggling how connected it is. Yep. That, well, what's and WhatsApp? Yeah. Oh yeah. WhatsApp. Yeah. WhatsApp and WeChat. WhatsApp. They're both two ones. Yeah. Yeah. It's because nobody <laughs> wants to type in China. If the if you see everybody use WeChat, it's they usually talk to it or speak English <laughs> or type <laughs> English. Nobody wants to type Chinese. It's terrible. Real. Oh yeah. I guess. Yeah, it's very sense, hard to right? type Chinese so, in a in a digital form. You know, it's it's a lot oh of characters. God. Yeah, 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 wow. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so he was in China, mm -hmm. and we basically he convinced DJI to team up with AGP mm -hmm. um, in Austria. So he created this uh, game called DJI Games. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Yeah, like it was a thing. Yeah, I heard so, of it. He created that and I, you know, like we both worked on it and he convinced DJI to partner up with AGP together in, as one event in Austria. So mm -hmm. we did that. We went over to Austria. I basically worked for DJI while he worked for AGP. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was a huge mess. So like, as you know, uh, DJI and, uh, you know, hobbyists don't really mix like there. There's a lot of differences there. Yeah. You know, the users. So uh, we knew that in the beginning, but, you know, there's a lot of backlash from a lot of the pilots that DJI was even involved. So there was kind of like a mini revolt on the track. So like <laughs> it was Ouch. supposed to be one event where the racetrack was going to be around the main DJI games. But basically... Um, we had to change it so that the racetrack was separate and the TGI games was separate. So they were separated by, you know, 100 meters. So uh -huh. it made it everything logistically a nightmare because now we have two locations. Right. And, you know, we're trying to film an event, put on an event, you know, deal with spectators, you know, deal with judging. And Ouch. <laughs> yeah. two events in one, you know, one race is hard enough and... Right. We weren't experienced in putting on races. You know, we only did like one, one or two local races. So 
you know, putting this on, lo- you know, internationally was a really tough thing to do. Definitely. Um, yeah. But it ended up happening and, you know, we got pretty good experience from it. And that was that, you know, and then after that was pretty much we came back. Um, we did a couple more local races and like some like expo races for certain companies like that hired us to put on like a demo race for a mm-hmm. technology company. So we did like some of those things as AGP and then basically uh, drone nationals was about that time, the 2015 drone nationals. So were you heavily involved in that or Uh-oh. did I freeze? No, you're still good. No, you're good. Yeah. Basically um, they contacted uh, us and we kind of helped them, you know, logistically put, put some of that on, you know, like we didn't do mm-hmm. everything. That's for sure. <laughs> We helped. Um, we were there during the whole race, and you know, helped coordinate everything with the track and the flow. So that was a really good experience, you know, to help that huge stage. And at that point, we knew that you know this drone racing was going to be something, something big, you know. Although with all the problems that went along with that race and every other race in history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much. So. I mean, there hasn't been one smooth race, you know, like maybe a small backyard race or something that'll go smooth. But well, that, why like, you you got to go to one of Wise races, man? Why why has some uh, stuff runs on time? Some good stuff. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Stuff runs on time. Why is a cool whip cracker? You know what I mean? <laughs> whip maybe like yeah. I tell you, I said, no. let's get started at six o'clock, and we better. Yeah, that's how you be talking to people, you know? Yeah. They, they, yeah, you know, they run around, yep, and get moving. Man. It takes, you know, it takes a while to get it all dialed in, right? You know, everything you need and technologies change, you know, timing systems change and it takes all a that lot. stuff, too. Yeah, you are nobody's friend when you're running an event, okay? You're like, you're no. either in, you're out, your stuff <laughs> works, or you get off the line. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. It What's is your name? Yeah, I don't care. It's a... <laughs> That's a lot of history right there because uh, definitely from 2014 up to 2015, all the way through 2015, that was kind of like the foundation of can this work and to be at, you know, to yeah. actually be there and trying to do all that. That was the hard part, right? Because literally yeah, nobody was. knew what they were doing at that point. They didn't even know if no. you could fly together. You know, you were lucky to get four people up in the air. It's like two right. people in the air. It's like, oh, OK, we'll try. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it was hard. You know, the challenge back then, the channels, we didn't have a race band, I guess, but nobody even uses race band now anyways. So <laughs> it's strange. Uh, yeah, it depends right? on the people, right? Uh, some people will, yeah. some people won't. Some people. Yeah. Ha- yeah, yeah. Anyways, video still a yeah. mess. That's all I'm going to say. It's still a mess. I don't care what you say. You know, it hasn't changed at all since 2014. You know, we're still on 5.8. <laughs> We're yeah. still limited now. It's still that's and so we're using it. Definitely. So and, and, but actually there we are have issues coming down the line. I hope so. But uh we so what issues. what happened onward from two thousand eighteen on or seventeen sixteen? Uh two thousand fifteen basically. Well that was the um the drone nationals, right? Um so pretty much what ap- happened after that was Uh, We just kind of did videos. We went out to, like, the desert Trona. We did a video in Trona. I don't know if you've ever been. It's, like, in a place in California where they shoot a lot of movies. It looks – it's crazy landscape. It just looks like Mars or something. Mm -hmm. They did, like, Planet of the Apes there. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you see that kind of – so we did a video out there that got pretty popular. And, you know, so we did some videos and then – as we were doing videos, we got contacted by the Dubai government, basically by email, saying, do you want to help put on a drone race in Dubai? So, you know, we got this email and we we're wondering, is this legit? You know, it's coming from the <laughs> prime minister's office and it has a seal of approval or every, and everything. So we're like, you know, what is this? Is this spam or something? So we didn't really believe it. We kind of looked into it. We looked up the name and it was like, looked legit it was like the real name so um we just took the call you know we talked to them and 
they basically wanted um, us to come. So they contacted us and IDRA, um, mm-hmm. the other league. Um, so they asked us to come to Dubai to talk. And so Rio went to Dubai and Charles from um, um, IDRA went to Dubai also and they talked to them. And, you know, at first they were very skeptical, you know, because they're getting Mm -hmm. on this plane to this foreign government. They don't know what they're getting into. So they, they talked to them and they convinced us that we should help them put on this race for Dubai. And the prize uh-huh. would be one million dollars. That so, was crazy back then. It's still crazy I mean, now, actually. I mean, yeah, yeah, just thinking about that is like nuts. Yeah. It was crazy. So yeah, basically it's one million dollars, but it's split down, you know, many ways, which is still a lot of money. The most that's ever been done yet for a drone race. Right. To date, still. Yeah. You know. Probably won't be beaten for a very long time. If ever. No, <laughs> probably not unless they do another one, which that was the plan. So, so basically we work with these guys for six months, you know, just through Skype calls and conference calls, planning every little bit of, you know, how the track should be and, you know, what kind of ground stations and just everything, you know, all together. Mm-hmm. So basically we were just advisors, but, you know, we were their sole drone advisors because everyone else didn't have any experience in racing or drones in general. So they basically hired like uh, an event company who designed the track and did all the logistics of actually putting on the event. Mm-hmm. And then, so me, uh, uh, AGP was sent over there a month before the race started to kind of test the track out and make sure all the ground stations work and just in general, make sure everything works for, you know, the big race day. Right. So we went there and, you know, working with the foreign government is, is a little different because you have to go through certain approvals and stuff like that. Right. Especially since Dubai is very anti-drone, which is strange, you know, they don't allow drone flying in the city you know they're very strict about it you could go to jail for it wow so (laughs) it's kind of interesting that this city wanted to put on a drone race so but basically from my understanding is they wanted to do some kind of promotion for dubai and they wanted formula one but they couldn't do formula one because it was already in abu dhabi Uh they already have a formula one event so they decided to What's the next best thing, you know? Drone uh-huh. racing. <laughs> it's just you know, as noisy. It's new technology, you know, that's what they're all about. And, you know, it's a big show for a million dollars. Right. You know, that the was, spotlight I mean, on man. Dubai for like a good small portion of time is it was an amazing experience, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. And, hey, it's a lot yeah. cheaper in Formula One, okay? I mean, like, you can sum uh, up everything. And Formula One yeah. is like, holy cow, the budget. $35,000. Yeah. <laughs> the budget yeah. for NASCAR and Formula One is crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And what those drivers get paid is crazy. <laughs> but yeah. then again, you know, the crowd comes along with them. They're a well-established sport. Oh, yeah. You know, like they're, you know, they have fans and they have uh, oh, yeah. sponsors coming in. So, I mean, there's a reason why they, they, they can get away with that type of budget. Unfortunately, we don't have yeah. that type of budget. We don't have. No, definitely. We don't have that kind of budget. Not yet, but we're starting to see more of it, right, with like DR1 and DRL. Hopefully. Yeah, I mean, but it's selective. You know what I mean? It's not, you know, it's, it's not like there's not a hundred pilots. There's not. No. Wait, 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 wait. I take that back. All right, you got to because you got to if you include all the guys at ready made, all the guys at F at get FPV, Lumineer, you know, uh, Horizon, there's 100 pilots. That's that's more than 100, <laughs> 100 pilots living, making a living off of a hobby. Right. 
Uh, I wouldn't. Uh, that's hard to say not. about that, okay? Because there's, there's, yeah. a hundred, there's at least a hundred. There's gotta be. I okay, mean, when you think that. about there's a hundred <laughs> part-time pilots that's making a living <laughs> because they are not. True. They are not paid to just go They're out, sit in a chair, fly. or stand up and right. fly. Part-time okay. pilots. Part-time pilots. That's part-time. True. Okay, yeah. I can okay. agree with yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I'll, I'll twist into that one. Yeah, I'm just I'll saying, that you know, there, there's not too yeah. many people. I mean, like you, you listen to like people like Jordan, man. I mean, without his DRL contract, he's not going to be full time either. No, he, no, because he, but but Jordan, yeah. he likes, you know, some of these guys have had have a life outside of <laughs> drone racing. I mean, you know, like like me. I mean, this is what I do. I mean, I I, I help guys get to fly, teach them how to fly you know, help guys get set up and all that stuff. But, you know, that's all I do. You know what I mean, and I'm thankful that I, I'm capable of doing that, you know, for the community because it, it, it is very, very fun and very rewarding when you see a pilot go off on his own and start helping another pilot. That's one of the things that really makes me appreciate the, being able to teach other pilots. But otherwise, I'm eating top ramen just like everybody else top ramen yummy <laughs> add an egg and you're yeah. good to go okay yeah. after dubai what else uh, went on <laughs> with your life i guess pretty much from then i went back to doing you know my camera stuff and mm. working part-time <laughs> yeah, he had to go make AGP. the money now right, yeah i right, gotta right. go and do money i went back to f- uh freelance film work you know i started working that and basically rio um, I guess Free Sky approached Rio because we had a relationship with Free Sky from other races and stuff that they sponsored. Mm-hmm. Um, so they approached Rio asking if he knew anyone in the California area, you know, who was qualified to do this job that was basically doing videos and tech support and testing and uh, marketing. And so, lo and behold, there you are. Ta-da! <laughs> I interviewed for it and... I got the job, and that's how I started this job. That's pretty cool. Actually, that's a that's very crazy. long story on how you got your <laughs> job, long, right? But, you know, it's and rewarding. Here I am, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? So at first, I am starting, like, uh, out of my garage. I, I, I started from my garage, and uh-huh. then we kind of have a, a shared space now with another wholesaler in the area mm-hmm. where we're going to open up some office space and we're actually going to hire another guy for tech support so we're going to have a tech support center oh here. boy that's actually tech really nice to send to China anymore. yeah yeah that's i'll, I'll really come down and, and work a, a lot weekend. easier for people to get this stuck <laughs> there you go i'll come down and Part work a work. weekend yeah i'll come down and work a go. free weekend if y'all pay for my plane ticket i'll work i'll, I'll come down <laughs> and work a week at, at, at wow guy if you pay for my plane ticket and i get to crash on your couch oh look at this he's got all sorts of caveats that he's putting in oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. hey you I'm know what though it is it is really nice that uh tech support and like uh just basic repairs is inside the u.s because like sometimes it takes forever to get some stuff back from china so <laughs> that's good to hear yeah, thank god you're not worried about trying to you know oh, yeah. do that anymore yeah, you're worried about if it's even going to get there, you know? <laughs> right, right, right. Pretty cool. stuff disappear so. all the time, you know? That's pretty cool, though. So, like, you are now an employee of uh, FR Sky. What is, like, your, you know, work day for FR Sky? Is it just you talking to dealers and then just <laughs> doing tech support? Or is it, like, it's different every day? Um, It's very different every day, but at least... Every day, there's one thing in common. I go on the RC groups uh, and, <laughs> you know, look at people's issues that they're having with certain products and stuff. Uh, uh, you know, I guess certain people um, are assigned certain threads to keep an eye on. So we can keep an eye on all the threads because there's so many threads just right. on RC groups alone, you know. True. So we try to keep up as much as we can answering questions, you know. But usually by the time question is asked someone next question you know so Mm -hmm. um 
I spent a lot of time just searching through RC groups in the morning. And then I answered emails, you know, contact a lot of uh, some of our pilots that we're talking to for technical, you know, feedback. Uh -huh. um, and then I also run Instagram account and uh, another thing I also do is I do videos. I'll, I'll do a lot of their um, how-to videos and install videos, promo videos, or I'll at least oversee some of the videos that they'll do in China. So that thing, that's easy for me, you know, because I'm, I'm a camera guy, you know. Right. We have a little tiny little hand studio here that I can shoot products at. So that's that's pretty fun for me. <laughs> that's and then I also get why the know all stuff, about them hands you know? that hand studio stuff. You know, he does that little that hand studio. In front of, yeah. All you see is the camera and his little fingers. He opened up the that's box me. and he take it out and he showed it <laughs> to you and he turn it around and he turn it this way and then he put it down. <laughs> <laughs> hey, as long as people watch, yep. I don't care. That's what uh, I say. Hey, it works. You know? yeah. no, it works. It works. Yeah, it's cat so to make that. sure your fingers are clean because yeah, like, yeah, yeah. comment on that stuff all somewhere. the time, all the time. It's all <laughs> right. If, you know, if they if they make fun of me for my fingers, that means they aren't complaining oh, about do. the content. So I'm I'm cool with that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a trade off. <laughs> trade -off. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's actually a pretty cool work schedule. That uh, you know, it's so different. It's a very diverse yeah. uh, day for you guys. You, you certainly don't. Get I try bored. to fly too, like. Every day I'll try to get out there, at least fly a battery, multi-rotor, mm -hmm. or a plane, something, as much as I can. But it doesn't always have work fun. out. Yeah, you got to yeah. have fun, right? <laughs> so so you, go ahead. You, you do fly, though. You, 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 just, you just fly short distance or all? I mean, you know. Um, just short distance because I live in a very urban area. So going ah. long distance requires driving somewhere. Uh, far you know so i just go to a local park or field there's like this slash park field that i fly at where you can go pretty far fly a fixed wing at least yeah you know? yeah 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 so totally uh, understand i hey. love it i yep. love that Gotta yeah it's your fun now most of us know that uh, have been flying FPV or any type of RC knows that um, FR Skies radios is probably one of the most popular radios out there because you have the JR module in the back and OpenTX would let you basically do just about anything so long as you can figure out the interface. No offense, but I think it'd be hard to remember. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I go through YouTube videos just to remember what buttons I need to press to get to a menu. <laughs> it's like, dang it, I forgot where, where to go. Okay, I got to go look it up. Yeah. Again. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. but let's talk a little bit about the radios. Like, obviously, yeah. the most popular one is the X90. That's the one yeah. right in there in your background yeah. right there. Like, is that the one that's still selling the most and, like, what people are still buying the most for FPV and all that? Yeah, I think that's still the number one seller right there. Um, I think I got an estimate of, like, there's over 200,000 of those out right now. Wow. Yeah. So in, in counting, you know, they're not stopping. So definitely there's yeah. a lot of them out there. Yeah. yeah. That just became the, <laughs> yeah. Good. I mean, that just became the radio of choice for a lot of people. And it's just amazing to where like you watch video after video and it'll be the, it would just be the Tyrannus and it's like, whoa, okay. Or it's a uh, sibling, I guess. But uh, you also came out with a, a new one called the QX7. Was that? Yeah. What What was that for? That's this one right here. It, um, it's basically your entry level model. So it's like one hundred and ten dollars. It has yeah. the same program that the X9 has in it. It has OpenTX. It only has it has two less switches and. Uh, um, four knobs less, so stuff that you know multi rotor pilots don't really want right. anyway. So it's basically geared towards the multi rotor industry. You don't and need two auxiliary really, switches. Yeah, no, and we realize that you know the multi in, multi rotor industry is completely different than any of the other RC industry out there. As you know, like you know, like helis, right? You know, you're not afraid to spend. 
three hundred bucks just to rebuild that thing. You know, it's like right. It, it involves money. This hobby, you know. But when it comes right. to multi rotors, people are really afraid to spend money. Yeah, they want the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. <laughs> it's like, so you try to make something cheap with yet everything they want still in there and basically that's this thing okay so yeah we came out with that you know to try and get that market okay so like is yeah. is the gimbals the same as the ones on the x9d or is it a completely um, different gimbal they are they are the same technology just little different molds and stuff as the stock ones okay mm -hmm. but we did come out with the new m7 gimbals for the x7 Okay. Uh -huh. The hall sensor upgrade. Oh, so you can that. actually just swap them out. So, yeah, now you have the option of getting hall sensors on your X7 if you want. You know? So is that, is, not everybody is, wants that expensive. Is that easy to do? So, oh, it, it's very easy, especially on this one. It takes four screws to open the back and mm -hmm. then four screws each gimbal. Pull it out, you know, replace the the cable and it's it and you calibrate it's probably one nice. of the easiest upgrades you can do wow that's yeah. actually really nice there's certain ones that are not easy yeah. to do <laughs> yeah. no this x7 was designed to be open very easily and the board is all on one side so you don't have like this you know with the x right. yeah, yeah, yeah 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 you got the ribbon cable and all that yeah you don't have that oh okay so it's super simple yeah cool it's and really yeah. cool Yep, I just got one of those, and it also has the JR module, so if anybody wants to use yeah. a different module, it's still accessible, so you're basically open to almost everything else. Yeah, like that little guy. Oh, little guy. That's, little guy. That little guy, yep. So that's, yeah. that's 20K right there, little guy. All right, so let's talk about the next <laughs> one. This is the the next one's actually my favorite, although nobody ever talks about, which is the X nine E. That's the tray radio uh, one. It's the massive yeah. one. Uh, he, funny story, funny yeah. story. I bought that one when it first came out, and uh, like I, I don't know if people remembered it, but that tray radio when it first came out, it had a very very uh, unique finish. It had the little swirly finishes. And uh, yes. the 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 later ones didn't have that swirly finish, yeah. So I wanted to keep that one, but uh, let's just say the handling on that wasn't very good, and one of the uh, uh, gimbals was completely broken. So I had to send wow. that one back. No. And then they sent me a new one, and they, they were nice about it. But like the other one didn't have the uh, the 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 swirly finish, and I was really bummed out. <laughs> I was like, dang <laughs> it, I wanted to keep that one. I did notice that about some of the earlier ones. Yeah, like that looks really cool. Yeah, I guess it was. Uh, it got cut out from uh, too expensive. I guess so. I, I kind of missed yeah. the, uh, my original one. That's all I'm gonna say. But I didn't get to play with it because it came broken. But you know, yeah, there are certain things that it does not. If I ever get anything. a chance, yeah. Well, if I ever get a chance to get one of those shells, I'll grab one for you. <laughs> that would be cool. It's <laughs> really finished on there. I like if I that ever finish. get a chance. Yeah, we'll I love see. that finish. But uh, <laughs> who was the tray radio for? Was it for uh, Elvin over here who's drooling all over it? <laughs> it's for the pinchers out there, you know. For <laughs> it's for the sitter downers. It's the sitter downers. Yeah. You like to sit down and just relax and. I will. You can, I will. You, you can won't put a drink catch. on it too. You know? Right. You won't catch. You won't catch. You won't catch uh, me out in the middle of the wilderness standing up. I mean that that don't make no sense. Oh come on! <laughs> uh, 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 uh. I tell That's you what. I have long no, cable that goes from my goggles to my receiver. You a funny man. But that is actually. Uh, I I like that radio. But uh, the funny thing is that the JR module on that one. You actually have to completely open the back and fit it in, and it doesn't like clip on. It's a little bit weird. I, yeah, it's I, I don't I don't understand because you can fit a JR module back there. It just doesn't hold. So like I had to like jury rig it with like some foam <laughs> to make sure it doesn't pop out or anything. It's a little weird. I'm not sure. That is kind of weird. Yeah, I'm not sure. It was designed really for that, but it works, right? It does work, so you can put in a JR module <laughs> back there. But it's definitely my favorite radio. And uh, like Elvin said, it's for the people that are in for the long-haul flights or if you like to pinch because it's really – that's how yeah. I learned to pinch uh, using tray radios because, yeah. like, 
you can't fly it with sticks on a tray radio. You have to pinch, <laughs> so it forces you to pinch. Yeah, yeah, and that's exactly. how you learn. Right, right, yeah. right. That is how you learn. That's how I I, I started off flying uh, on a tray when uh, uh-huh. I got involved in, uh, you know, the big planes. Once you get in that, yeah. you know, 20, 30%, you know, size ship, you know, it's like, it's things feel so much better, you know, when you just you in there and you just sit there. And you're just like, oh, yeah, that's right there, right there. Look like at that thing right there. <laughs> but I mean, that's how I fly. That's how I fly 3D aerobatics for, for large, large airplanes, for planks, you know, not uh-huh. for helicopters. Helicopters, I, I seem to just thumb it. Uh, oh, yeah. And, but for airplanes, it seems for me to feel comfortable to fly. I I pinch, you know, and uh, it, it's it's what I do, you know. A little. It, extra. What about for FPV? FPV? Which one do you do? It's half, half, right, right, half. yeah, right, left hand pinch, right hand thumb, just thumb. That's, that's all I do. You know, that's weird. Yeah. That's the first time I ever heard that. Yeah. Right hand, <laughs> left left hand. Oh, pinch. I've heard the hybrid before. Yeah. Yeah. Never it it okay. just feels comfortable for me. Okay. Hey, you know, whatever feels comfortable is going to work. That's what I say. <laughs> yeah. okay. That's what I say, yeah. Yeah. And the last one, the most expensive one so far, is the Horus X12S. That one yeah. uh, is not for FPV guys, although there are some FPV guys that do have that. Is that right. is that my – is that the intention? Um, It's really geared towards um, – yeah, more towards fixed wing, you know, because uh, – it's in, what we have installed in there is the FROS system. Right. You could also put OpenTX on there as well, you know. But FROS system is like it's a system that FreeSky has been developing. Um, just a menu system, you know. They're trying to s- make everything a lot more simple mm. for the airplane user. You know, all these mixes. So it's it's our own. Um, it's our own program. And um, so the the quality on this X12 is also uh, much higher than a, you know your standard X9. Yeah. So there's a lot of metal parts. It's got full CNC hull gimbals. Beautiful. Um, yeah, it's got the big color screen. Um, you know, it's just got a wider stance to it. It's got some heft to it, that's for sure. And it has upgraded switches and knobs. Just everything is just like really sweet. <laughs> it just feels sweet in your hand. That's the only way I can. You know, you know, it. you're holding a you big know. boy radio when you pick it up. Uh, I can tell you that. Yeah. You know, you know, you hold. You like. Oh, I, this is a radio. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is a radio. <laughs> <laughs> the pictures don't do it justice until right. you actually feel yeah, it. Like, I, yeah. I, I know when we were at when we were at Dover and I got to look at that. I mean, I was like, oh yeah. yeah. He won't notice. He won't notice. <laughs> <laughs> it's he, a nice radio, but it's also, yeah. like you said, it's a hefty radio. So uh, yeah, it d- is. If you want to hike up a mountain, not the radio that not you want to go radio to. <laughs> no, no, no. Not an FPV backpack, you know, no. type of radio. No. Definitely. But it's the one I use for fixed wing most of the time. That's my favorite fixed wing radio. It's a great um, looking radio, and, and it's yeah. A, it, uh, I think it looks pretty cool. It, it's you know, like I said, you know, when you pick it up, you know, you know. I mean, that, there's a couple of like the like the uh, like the nine XR, you know, that radio, right? That when you pick that yeah. radio up and you compare it against the Tyrannus, right? Yeah. They feel different. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. And, and so, you know, like like uh, like when I the the original Bad Boy radio. The the ninety three oh three, which is where where I started off with back in ninety two. Well, no, no, then I got that in two thousand. Sorry about that. Anyway, but that's the radio I I jumped from Fataba to from uh, yeah. from Fataba uh, uh, a Fataba seven channel or eight channel to that radio. Anyway, but those those radio like your radio and this radio feel very similar to me. So like when I when I pick up a Tyrannus, the only thing that confuses me is the software. <laughs> That's the everyone. Only, yeah. I mean, everyone. Yeah. 
I mean, it's like that's the only thing that I I literally like I will I have refused to buy one because yeah. I don't want to deal with the software. I mean, I like I, I I think I think that that's the next level for you guys, right? To come out <laughs> with presets. I mean, it's not that yeah. hard. It's not that hard. And I know you guys have some presets already, right? Yeah, that's where the FROS comes in. It's trying to simplify right. that whole system, you know. So you have to buy the expensive radio for that. <laughs> I think, but yeah, we're gonna try to maybe move that into other, you know, radios as well. You know, so you have options. Yeah, I think that yeah. that to me that's to me that's the biggest yeah. thing that me and a couple of other pilots have yeah. said. You know, oh, no, we don't want to go that route because <laughs> we have to learn how to program a radio. You know, and and uh, I'm I'm like. At this amount of money, I can buy, you know, something that already is programmable, but it just doesn't doesn't give me all options. And that's that's where I feel that it's easier for you guys as a company to bend a little bit and win over the newer guys or some of us older guys, because there is a lot of guys that love the Tyrannus radio. And I know a couple of guys that have Tyrannus Spectrum and um nine uh uh Turnergy 9xr pros and um, they have them for different reasons and yeah. you know and uh they enjoy them but everybody complains about the programming for for open tx it's like the worst yeah. thing and uh and no, I've, it, I've, there's definitely a like a learning curve for right. open tx no doubt for that right. like just Simple something like how to set your flaps, you know, right? Right, right, right. So, uh, yeah, how to set up yeah. a delta wing, or, or, or yeah, delta wing, yeah, you yeah, know, you or know. or how to set up, you know, for a helicopter. Yeah, yeah, the cycling. Because you guys have like the yeah. range. I mean, you guys supposedly yeah. have better range. You guys have smaller yeah. antennas. I mean, smaller receivers that yeah. have better range characteristics right now than some of the mm. other protocols out right now. And I yeah. think that you guys, you guys could benefit more from the newer long-range pilots going that route. <laughs> no, I agree. Um, that's where we have a new product coming out, actually. Oh and yeah, it's kind of gearing towards that. So it's the X10, which is just below the X12. Uh huh. So high-quality radio, you know, just as high-quality as the X12. But smaller form factor, it's gonna be lighter too. Mm -hmm. um, it'll have, it won't have all the unnecessary features that the X12 has. Like, you know how the X12 has like um, its own GPS and its own like uh, accelerometer. Right. So, well, with the X12, you could actually control something with it, like a smartphone, because it has an accelerometer built in to it. Wow. So, we figured out, you know, people don't really want that. So. Right. You know, get rid of stuff like this, you know, make it cheaper. Um, make it cheaper, but still high quality. It has a high-vis screen on there. Um, it runs FROS, our own operating system, mm -hmm. which is much easier to set right. up for helicopters, airplanes, delta wings, V-tails, you name it, you know? Sweet. You got all, every function in there, you got, you know, crab, you got... Flapperons, you got everything you want in there. It's very easy to do. Some it's, some crow, um, some crow in there. Is this yeah, crow, crow in there? Oh, oh, oh yeah, man. tons oh, of crow. Oh, oh my goodness, some crow. Tons of I crow. Mean, I'm like, what the knife hell? Edge, everything you want, you know. So um, yeah, y'all don't know about the crow. Y'all better go get you some. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are funny, but that's an interesting radio, and uh, hopefully we'll get to see that radio soon. We saw some pictures of there. Yeah, uh, it's kind of interesting because you know in the Horus the screen's up on top, but you moved it back yeah. down to the bottom in the X10 where <laughs> most people have gotten traditionally used to seeing it. Used to, yeah. But I'll be honest yeah. with you, I kind of like the screen at the top because it's easier to see. But it's like, but I the, do the problem is, is that it sticks <laughs> really high up and it makes things hard to pack because it's up there. <laughs> so it's like right. a trade-off. Because it's because you it have to put it above you know, so the, either... the neck thing, right? Exactly. 
So traditionally, the gimbals are the high point of the radio, right? So once you right. put the screen up there, the radio is like twice as big instantly, mm. like the Turnigy Evolution, which is like a which manages to save space by getting rid of the whole the bottom screen. part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but they move the screen up top, so it's kind of a trade off, you know. It's so I guess we decided. It is a little weird. Kind of I saw one the other. Bring day. it back down there. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a fan of it. Yes. Yeah. The evolution. Yeah. I'm not, yeah. Like, I've never tried it. I, I'm curious. It looks to try like my one. Xbox controller. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I just want to play some Delta, some Call of Duty or something. <laughs> You'd be surprised on how many people want that form factor, though. That's true. I, I bet. I mean, yeah. it. It. Yeah. It. it my son likes yeah. it. I mean, he, you yeah. know, he, he looked at it and he was like, uh, can I get one of those? I'm like, hell no. I don't <laughs> get, you, know, so. <laughs> you can't get, you know, hey, we're you not going to go out and buy a new radio when you have others yeah. here. You know yeah. what I mean? It makes sense for throwing it in a backpack, though. You know, yeah. True that. True, so. that. True that. The form so. factor is just great if you yeah, just want something small. Yeah, because you can get small. a lot more batteries in your backpack yeah. if you got one of those little things. In there. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we're, we're thinking about all these form factors, you know, we we see what's going on in the market and we listen, you know, like Free Sky's main objective is listen to what people are telling Free Sky, you know, like what are the problems, you know, what do we need to work on? Because that's, that's how any company grows and makes anything better, you know, it's by community feedback. So we are huge on, you know, reading forums and listening to people what they have to say so you know bring the comments on you know just even if they're mean you know like we learn from everything <laughs> even <laughs> Which, if they're mean you just heard to hear yeah. folks it's the first time i've heard that for somebody who has to read all those threads bring it on <laughs> <laughs> i can handle it i can handle it now yeah. you also have a new module coming out called the r9 what is that yeah 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 the r9 um it's a receiver and a module um, that runs off 900 megahertz, so it's a long range. Megahertz. Yeah, so it's exciting. It'll have full telemetry on it. It runs S bus and PWM, so you can use it for pretty much anything out there. What's the range? Come on now. What's <laughs> That's the range? That's what I want to um, know. I I haven't quite tested the range yet, so but it, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty good. It should. It should be comparable with everything out there. What, right what's now. the power? What's the power you guys are going to be running? Do It'll you know? be switchable, so you can switch from ten, twenty-five, five hundred, and then a thousand. Whoa! So, okay, so yeah. one watt. Yeah. That's one watt. That's one watt. That's yeah, that's twenty k. Yeah. That's twenty k. <laughs> I can get twenty k. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Right there. That's, that's yeah. Yeah, that's so funny. I like that. I like so, that. 900 yeah, I, megahertz is the way to go for distance. I mean, if you're going to... I think so. Uh, well, there's two ways, right? I mean, there's, yeah. like what I do now is 433, and then 900 is, is a good option because you can yeah. run 2.4 for video, and you never have any issues, right? <laughs> so, yeah. I like that. that. That's the way I like that, but, I mean, you're not going to get 20K, you know, unless you're out in the middle of nowhere, you know, yeah. with 900, because the noise floor is kind of high around the city, for sure. That's, yeah, yeah, that's so, so true. You got to get away from town. But, <laughs> hey, you know, if you give me the option to fly 20K, then, you know, as long as I, like me, I have, I'm setting up a ship now that it has 20K distance, but the video is only going to be seven, right? So I know that I just got to stay within the seven, you know, and, and that's all that matters. The, the, I, I prefer having further control distance than video distance. That's for sure. Yeah. Because, you know, it's nothing. I, I The last thing I want to do is lose contact with my ship <laughs> and yeah. wait for return to home. You know, that's that's so 900 megahertz, one watt at 900 megahertz. I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'm going to do the math right now. I'll tell you what it what it what the distance is. <laughs> the math to do the distance. So <laughs> uh, the receivers for that, because I know some mini quad pilots that love to run at 900 megahertz. Are the receivers really big and bulky or can they fit into a mini quad? 
um, it could fit in mini quad, but right now it's, it's it's pretty bulky. You know, it's like a it's like a fixed wing receiver okay. the size right now. I, so it's you, the first, yeah. You know, the first version of it. So I would say it definitely come out. And, I would say shrink that down because uh, oh yeah, there's pilots <laughs> in the mini quads that will definitely be into the 900 megahertz because they do some gnarly stuff. You know, go behind some gnarly buildings and stuff and. Uh, to yeah. drop under you know the uh, gigahertz and you know get that penetration a lot of guys yeah. would be interested in that yeah no we definitely agree too yeah that we're, we're gonna work on smaller versions as well and i don't know maybe maybe you know different frequencies as well so we'll see Q. that's that's 10 10 yeah. point 10 point seven five miles man that's <laughs> 10. that's, that's five how, miles that's on uh, two halfway dipoles. That's 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 plenty. That's, that's plenty. more than plenty. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Long that's range than, nerd. Long range yeah, nerd. That's way. <laughs> you 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 could get you <laughs> you could get in a lot of trouble at ten and a half miles out. Wow. Yes, you can. You, Damn. I'll, 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 I'll go outside my house and wave to you or something. Yeah, yeah. By your house, no, because there's an airport within three miles of your house yes that is actually very true right there's no 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 I'm so not you need to that. build yourself a stealth wing that's what that's what <laughs> 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 anyways but go ahead i mean so r9 the r9 is is coming out how, how soon is that going to be out um it should be out already actually i believe or if not very soon yeah Oh, I think yeah. they're they're coming out to distributors now. So, Elvin, go Google that, and I'll f- quiz him on the next one. So, this is okay. the one that I'm super interested <laughs> in: is that uh, FR Sky is getting into the flight controller business. So, tell us the reason why you decided to start, you know, you know, building your own flight controllers and then uh, putting it under the FR Sky name. Um, I think it was just this big wave of um, you know, these all-in-one boards where people were putting everything in the flight controllers and including free sky receivers, you know, so, you know, free sky protocol receivers. So we decided why not put our receiver in there, you know, with our reputation and, you know, just build from there. So we put our XSR flight control, I mean, XSR receiver in um, these flight controllers, which are, we're going to release four of them. Uh, They're, F3 based and F4 based. So we'll have two of each. Okay, cool. So we'll, yeah, there it's an XSR combined with an F3 plus the um Betaflight OSD chip and then that's one of them and then we'll have another version that will have a PDB also on it. So basically all you'll need with the PDB version is ESCs and you'll have a a really clean you know, racer. <laughs> and then we'll also have an F4 version of, of all of those flight controllers. That F4 is pretty chip. cool. That's not a bad price either. How much is um, it? They'll be, I think the most expensive one will be 50. 50? Yeah. Which will be probably the F4 with the PDB. Okay. Yeah, 50, that's, not, that's yeah. not a bad price so, at all. No. Yeah, for all you're getting, you know, it's it's a lot there. Okay, cool. Like, uh, what is the name of that? Have they come up with a name, and when is it going to be available? Yeah, it's the XSR F three O, and then the XSR F four O, and then XSR F. <laughs> you guys just love P-O, making cryptic names. And then the XSR F P O. <laughs> you guys yeah, need to like start all... using regular names, man. Names, names, yeah. Yeah, everything no, is no, like it's... uh like a serial number. It's like even your radios. Oh, yeah. It's all serial. It's all numbers. Yeah, it's just model numbers. That's pretty cool, <laughs> though. I mean, I I look forward to actually seeing some competition in the uh, because flight controllers are it's a competitive market, but it's one of those things where people go through a lot of them, and like you also, you know, yeah. when you build a new quad every time, you always need a new flight controller. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see if that uh, if that uh, really you know takes off because I know the Emacs version which has a F- FR Sky Free Sky. See, look. I'm telling you, I, I've gotten so used to say calling it FR Sky now. Um, they have one, and like they sold out real quick the first few batches. Yeah. So, 
Uh, I think it'll be popular so long as you advertise it. Yeah, I think there's a demand for it. So especially in the multi-rotor industry, like you said, space. Yeah, everybody wants to save space and wait, yeah. so this helps you do that. Cool. Uh, yeah. I don't think you have any pictures up on the website or Facebook no. page or website um, yet because I have not seen I do them. on my Instagram. I think I have some photos. Oh, I do. okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, don't worry about it. I'll check out your Instagram. I didn't know you, you guys were running an Instagram page. I'm just curious yeah. to see the board itself and stuff like that, but it is pretty cool. Uh, any other, like, uh, you know, multi, uh, multi-rotor related stuff that's coming out? Um... I, you know, it's going to be six months from now, Elvin, they're going to be making their own ESCs because that's the only thing they're not making. <laughs> well, I, uh, I, uh, I got, I got an issue with, with, <laughs> with companies going too far. I think, I think we need to, you know, I, I don't know if, you, uh, if your company is, I think companies need to stay focused, you know, I, don't venture too far. I mean, I understand. Exactly. You you have you have the resources to do certain things. I I I totally agree, and you you may have a uh, a guy there in research and development that has an idea on how to run something a little bit better or a little cleaner or a little and and you you need to venture into that that department and possibly give this op- this person an opportunity to show you something that's never been seen before. I understand that. But then again, I also understand that you're pushing your company and you spread your resources to F and Z. You know, yeah. there's a lot of companies <laughs> that are, you know, hey, why, you know, this is that's this is my opinion. I'm just saying. This I'm just smiling. My, I didn't say anything. This this is my opinion. <laughs> like, there's a few companies out here that are just doing like spreading way too thin. Like, yes, yes they, Mr. Grinch. They're, they're doing too many things at one time. And they can't, you know, they they promise a lot and you never you hardly ever see anything come to fruition, you know. Because they 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 have the capability, but they because they spread so thin, they can't get shit done. You Sven, know? what's your response to that? And it's not it's not it's I'm not saying it's <laughs> your you? company. Uh, da, 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 I, I want to stop that. covering no, no, your no. ass. Let him talk. <laughs> I I want to say it's not it's it's not your company yet, you know. But I, I'm I'm yeah. concerned about say Fry FR Sky or any other company, new company coming out stretching too thin and worrying about reaching into all of these different de- departments of of multi rotors or, or FPV or whatever you want to call it and and not really finishing the main focus of their you know product line you know I mean you guys make you guys make hellified radios that overwhelm the market because of the price thing the opportunity DIY Everybody that was in DIY, you guys hit that market well. Now, you guys are going into flight controllers. Okay, what what's next? You know, I mean, are are you guys? <laughs> you know that. I mean, that's that's my my concern is, are you guys focusing enough in the direction that you 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 started off, or do I, now next month you guys are going to be making motors too? <laughs> I don't think we're gonna be making motors. Yeah, but like, I mean, like we try to keep everything within um, radio and receiving radio. So you know, the uh-huh. flight controller still receives the radio in a way. Uh-huh. So it's still a receiver on the, the data path, the right? Crap on there. Yeah, it's in the data path. <laughs> so yeah, we we just want to try to integrate the flight controller with the receiver more. You know, not just physically, but also like. You know, programmably. Right, right, like, right, right, right. Why does it need to be so many different things there? You know, for a multi rotor. So right. we we're trying to just progress. You know, we're dabbling in a little bit here and there and see. You yeah, know. I mean, I'm not I'm not <laughs> knocking you guys for it. I'm no, no. That there's there's other I, companies I out so. there. I'm I'm worried that I don't I don't want you guys to be like some other yeah. companies. You know, yeah. I mean, I think you guys are on a you, you guys are done well in in 
the radio. I know, I know some radio people that work for a couple of the radio companies, and I know the company's mantra on FPV. You know what I mean? And it's not very well. So, you know, the fact the fact that you guys are have gone there before everybody did, which is what made you guys have such a great strength because the other companies said to hell with FPV. They didn't want yeah. nothing to do with it. They did they they thought that, you know, a week a week after they came out with a radio, five hundred guys was gonna be standing in the in their backyard dropping bombs all over the city. That's what I mean I, I'm just being honest. I mean that that's what they thought was gonna happen. And it, and and you guys proved that that wasn't going to happen, you know? So, <laughs> you know, I mean, that I'm just yeah. concerned about whether or not you guys are going to go too far, you know? Cause yeah. I like, I, like I said, you guys do make great products and a lot of people love them and a lot of people use them and I'm all in for the long range, the, the nine, the nine R, I mean, R nine at 900 megahertz because I seen the price. It's $116 for the, the, the module and, the receiver and that's a great price point i mean a hundred bucks you know to do five miles is not a bad thing i i paid i remember when i paid <laughs> you know a lot more you know what i mean a, a lot yeah. more to get half that distance you know so i think what you guys are doing now is is innovative but you know don't want you guys to go too far so now I'm going to push you too far and piss off Elvin. So <laughs> what I would like to see is actually, and I, I thought this had more of a synergy. I would actually like to see your radio controller and your VTX as a combo because they're, and then have like in your high end radios being able to use that beautiful screen to show FPV, you know, you, you might as well be able to do that. You have a nice, beautiful screen in your Horus and your X10. Show FPV? Yeah. Just as like a check. You smart audio to be able to change channels easily right on your radio and you're like uh, in your Fire OS or something like that. If our oh, that I agree. Yeah, you guys okay. should do that. that because I like, know. like, and I'm talking about a really good like five eight or two four, you know, FPV because there's only one or two companies that really make good VTXs. And like, if you if there's another brand you know that can compete, it, it's always good there. Because there's not really mm -hmm. that many. And to make it easy to switch in the radio, I know that Smart Audio allows you to do that right now, but it's still a little finicky. But to have another yeah. one that can do that and then be able to display it on like the high-end radios, that'd be really nice. The, yeah. You mean display no, the, that's a great the idea. BTX yeah. picture? That's yes. what you're saying. Yeah. So like you could actually – like because like a lot of times when you're about to get onto the line, like sometimes you, you want to make sure you're on the right channel – or if you know it looks good, you can actually look down at your radio instead of having to put it, your goggles down, stuff like that. It's just a quick check, or yeah. you can just ride along with somebody else. Yeah, kind of like the TBS Tango, right? Which has that in the center. Yeah, you're almost the there. Camera. Yeah, yeah, you're almost there. You just need the the VTX <laughs> part on the quad. <laughs> Maybe I don't well, know. I mean, you almost. Yeah, you're right. You're almost there. I mean, yeah, you're, you're in the data yeah. pathway. Well, I mean, you can use the JR <laughs> module in the back to. Like, I I don't know how far how flexible them, it is, right? Yeah. But you can put a like the JR module instead of using another frequency. You can use that as a ground station port in to 5. your. Five point eight. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just giving you ideas. No, no. And then like no, that, that's a, actually a really good idea. Yeah, even for like a connector system or something, right? You could power it off of that. You know, ground yeah. stations. So I don't know. Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. Uh, that that sounds interesting. <laughs> I, I'm just like me. I I I don't know. I'm not I'm not into looking at my radio anymore. <laughs> you know, I want it piped up. You're so my goggles. mean. You're just so. I, I'm serious. I mean, I just want the shit put in my goggles. You know, I want I want I want to be able to 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 make my controls. And I I, I like smart audio. It's a great idea. Um, uh, but I I'm from. You know, MWOSD. You know, I mean, I I, I still use that. Yeah. You know, so, <laughs> I mean, it's it to me, it's I just can't change my channel on my VTX or my power level. But some some of the radios out now have that option, and it just you just have to buy the right stuff to 
to talk to it, right? Yeah. It, and I know you guys are working in that direction. Yeah. So. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Definitely some more integration. Like, when it comes to flying FPV, the, the most annoying thing for everybody is always the video channels. You know, right. any technology yeah. solving that problem, I it think the great. community in general will be very right. receptive <laughs> towards. Yeah. I fully agree with that. Yeah, that's the biggest the thing setting us back from turning this into Formula One, you know? Right. It's being a being being, being a coded ID video. That's that's gonna that'll be yeah. the thing that 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 moves us far enough ahead. But with the with the uh Connex system being, you know, kind of like right now, it's kinda see. passe. Yeah. I mean, let's let's be honest. I mean, it, it, it's the shit it, it, when it's working. It's the bomb, <laughs> thing, but when it's not when working, it's, not, it's, yeah. it's it's shit. It's it's expensive shit yeah. that you bought <laughs> that doesn't work. <laughs> you know? It is. It, it has its niche right now. There. Yeah, yeah. Right. the the niche is for them is indoors. Unfortunately, right. that's not a big enough niche because their stuff is heavy. And like they don't, their stuff doesn't fit on the 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 real micro quads. If it did, they would have a market because like indoors, it is just amazing because it's crystal right. clear and you can fly anywhere and it just doesn't care. Right. <laughs> indoors, <laughs> I mean, unfortunately, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The price tag still kind of hurts though, but yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, and and you know they they were they stuck their neck out in the beginning, so they you know they they were out there you know. And and they did good. I mean, no knocking knocking Connex. I mean, the 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 people over there. We met them. You know, they're good people, and, and they have a business theory. And and uh, it's just right now, it's not the number one thing. You know, everybody's back to analog. I mean, that, that yeah. really. I mean, that's <laughs> that's why why has Connex? Yeah. Ask him when the last time he used it. Hey. I have Connex too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do use I do use my like uh my floater long range Connex a lot more than I do with my racing Connex. I I I'm going to agree with Elvin on that. It actually yeah, makes yeah. a good like like mid-range slash long distance platform. The Connex actually works out as long as you have clear line of sight. Uh, yeah, clear line of sight. But cruising, yeah. yeah. Elvin's got a point. <laughs> I'm not going to disagree with him. That and I broke my arm on my Connex so I need to go fix that. That's a different story though. <laughs> Anyway, I have the Connex too, and um, I flew it, and I, I just there's a, that little bit of latency just kind of bugs me, you know. Yeah. And I did have a dropout when someone else plugged in 5.8 for some strange reason, <laughs> and blacked out completely. And that's not supposed to happen. I was like, okay, I'll just put that aside for now. <laughs> right. Ouch. So I don't Camera know. Camera guy. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of it's new fun. stuff on the market right now that, that, I mean, you know, I know we're not talking about FR Sky stuff right right at this moment, but no. um, yeah, there's that's all really kinds cool. of new stuff on the market, like the the, the run cam split, you know, it's, it's on the market yes. right now. And, you know, I'll say, here's my professional opinion about that. Great product, looks awesome, very cool, but there's no way in hell you can race with that damn thing through the, the split. I mean, it, I don't understand why they, you know, you see the camera as the number one camera to, in the slot where you look because the delay is, is like 30 milliseconds. It, what that mean when you're doing oh, 80 yeah. miles an hour, that means you missed the gate. <laughs> you, you either yeah. went through the gate and you're like nine feet back and you got to turn around <laughs> and start all over. Or you know yeah. you, you're gonna you're gonna miss something crucial you know and and you know hopefully you're not landing and you misjudge your distance <laughs> and hit yourself you know and that's that's how I see all the latency stuff you know I mean yeah we're like at what 10, 10 milliseconds for actual analog video ten or fifteen milliseconds you know. And we play video games, and like my my monitor here is five milliseconds delay, and Damn. it's it's <laughs> it's you know, and I know like my son's monitor is is one point five milliseconds, you know, and I mean he's got the money Damn. stuff, and, and I got the old stuff, but you know, <laughs> thirty milliseconds to me is like, what happened? 
You know what I mean? Yeah. You're flying, yeah. you go to make a turn, and like, what happened? <laughs> why, why do I see nothing but grass? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the me. that's the thing that that blows me away. So like, I'm not. I'm. Yeah. I think it's a. I think the run cam um, split is a great idea, and it they had to do something with the whole fact of the run cam three. I mean, it's yeah. a pro- piece of product that I'm so sorry that, you know, know. they got <laughs> sued by GoPro. But, hey, you know what? You knew when you was making it. <laughs> you know what I mean? You knew exactly. You knew what you was making. Yeah. You knew what the market. You could have made some more changes. And you yeah. would be in this predicament now. So that that's how I feel <laughs> about them. But let's yeah. move back on to you. <laughs> he starts rambling, and then like the topics go all over the place. I have oh, to wrangle him back. No, it's a good topic, actually. Yeah, I, I think it's a good thing because like it'll teach other companies to think twice before they start cloning stuff. You know? Right, right, right. I Which, mean, it, this, it's a good thing. Like, like, like I, I, I have been with a couple of companies from the beginning, right? Yeah. So like. They've made products that look very similar to other companies' stuff, right? Of and course. then they tell me to go present that to the to the public, and I present it, and I get ridiculed, right? I get slandered, yeah. I get called all kind of names, you know, dirty so and so, blah 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 blah. Go back to the woods, and all, you know, people talk crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, but you know, they don't understand that I'm just doing what I was told by my boss, right? I mean, because that's that when you work like what I do. That is your boss. That's how you get stuff. You get paid, you know, by them sending you product to to review or test or whatever. And from time to time, that's what you do is you display it, right? And, you know, yeah. and sometimes stuff look exactly the same as other stuff and you get yelled at and you <laughs> just have to fuck it up, right? And yeah. and I don't have bad bad thoughts about that. But, you know, when it happens to them after, though, you know, like, they they get yelled at for cloning something, and they're like, "Ah, oh, don't worry about it. It's no big deal." But then when somebody clones something of theirs, <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's like, and then you go, you go, well, that's what I was trying to say about this product. <laughs> and he was like, "Go ahead, don't worry about it. it just run it, you know." And 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 now you're like. Holy crap! We're gonna kill them all. We're gonna slam them all in a boat and set them on <laughs> fire and blah 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 blah. We're gonna sue them, blah blah blah. And you know, and it's the same thing. But I will say this in this hobby: there's not a lot that doesn't look similar to something else. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a yeah. there's a lot of products out today that looks like something we saw five years ago, right? I mean, I was just talking to somebody yeah. yesterday. We were talking to uh, Jordan. We were talking about Jordan flying uh, the the Super Light series back the yeah. XB two twenty back at at Nationals. You know they were they were uh-huh. flying the Super Light systems, and the problem that they had in Nationals two thousand fifteen was a ship was so light they couldn't control it. Uh, and now that, that was, that's what he was saying yesterday. I mean when we interviewed him, and he he was saying that. They had a hard time controlling. It was super fast, but it was hard to control. And, you know, those now we have all these other ships that are out right now in the, in the market that are all super light, you know, and then you pull something out and you go, look, and they go, oh, wait, that's a clone. No, 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 no. This was like five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know, they, <laughs> this is like five years ago. Man. This is nothing. This is yeah. well, this. This just happened. But. This was five years ago, and this just happened. So who's actually following who, you know? And it's hard <laughs> to come out with a new piece of product today that's, that doesn't it's have so some aspect true. something else. Yeah, like everything comes back, right? There's trends like soft mounting your flight controls. We were doing that <laughs> way back in the day, right? Yeah, but we were doing that because <laughs> we had shitty equipment, not because yeah. – I mean, we <laughs> – that's the thing. That's the. Uh, I mean, uh, let's. Wait a minute. Wait a, wait a minute. Hold on. You're still doing that now. <laughs> soft mounting yeah. equipment because of shitty equipment. What are you talking about? <laughs> right, 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 right. I mean, you just tell the truth, right? Why? Yeah, I mean, that's what it is. The reason why we we you have to soft mount this stuff is because it's shitty. 
you know, because somebody <laughs> at the company said, hey, uh, they didn't test all 10,000 pieces of product. They only tested 100. And, uh, and we only had five bad out of that 100. Well, now the other out of the 10,000 is there's 8,000 that's damaged, you know, or, or bad. Oh, you know how to fix that? Just add some old rings to the kit. <laughs> and, and that's the new hype. That, that is not true, man. That's that's a BS. I have I have two flight controllers here. That one is version one, and one is version two. And version one has no O rings on it. And version two, if you try to run it without O rings on it, it will tear the ship apart. <laughs> it's simple as that, you know. And I like this. How is this an improvement over this? You know what I mean? I mean <laughs> and this costs more, too. You know what I mean? That's oh, yeah. the other thing that pisses me off. All right. I, I, Stop I know, trying to get yourself fired. It's frustrating. I mean, it, it really, we, you know, you're testing stuff and you're going through stuff and people are, you know, sending you stuff to, to work on and you try to, try to be professional sometimes, but you know, some some of the stuff that comes to the door, I just want to take a hammer to it. You know, it's like <laughs> this, <laughs> this is some garbage. But you know, I, okay, I'll run the test. I will do the flights. I'll report back in. But I'm not happy about this piece of crap. That is life, as they say, as the tester. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, but let's get back on to what you yeah, talk. It's got to be hard. <laughs> so in, like, in FR Skyland. Yeah, in FR Skyland, what else is uh, going on? Is there anything else that uh, you want to report on before we move on? Um, let's see. What else do we got going on with FR Sky or Free Sky? Yes. Free Sky. Now you got me saying FR Sky. <laughs> <laughs> now we're all mixed up. Free Sky. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Free Sky. Um, I mean, I don't know. What else do we got to talk about? Well, Wait. Okay. So I got. I got a question. I got. I got yeah. another question. I'm, I'm gonna dig deep here. Uh, so. So right now, you guys got this one receiver, right? That is good for long range, but guys are having problems with it. What's up with that? The L nine R. Yeah. Yeah. L nine R. Yeah. The long. The long um, range receiver. What's up with yeah, that? L nine R. Yeah. Um. I don't know actually. What's up with that? I think. Um firmware stuff needs to be worked out with it so i think a lot of people are getting what fail safes right At, yeah 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 the fail safe stuff yeah but um i think it has a lot to do with because it has to match up with the with the controller you're using as well mm -hmm. so a lot of times you have to make sure your controller is up to date you know so you have to update your controller depending on them whether it's x9 or Horus. Mm -hmm. A lot of these will have new firmware updates. So if you do have FreeSky, like try to check often on the website whether there's new updates for your controller, because you know a lot of these issues are are being worked out and being you know released in new firmware updates. That that's that's yeah. good. That, that's a good that's good because you know like one that's, of the things I, I'm like amped about is. To make sure that the company is paying attention, you know what I mean, of what's going on. Yeah, yeah. You know, we 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 talk about FR Sky and some of the other radio companies like, you know, Photographast, you know, Spectrum, you know, um, and uh, the other ones, the ones that really don't matter. Uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. I was trying to it. get fired from everybody today. No, I mean, I mean that, that, I, that's how I see it. As there's some some out there that don't matter because they're just filling the hole. You know what I mean? And they're not really doing a lot. But there's Fataba, there's Spectrum, there's FR Sky, who are venturing out and doing stuff innovative. Like Fataba, Fataba, we can all say Fataba has been doing this for longer than anybody. Fast uh, spread spectrum. Uh, spread um, has been around back in the day when 1980s, 70s, 80s. Mm -hmm. They were doing uh, remote um, cutting of steel. That's what that's what the welders, the big ship welders and stuff like that. 
they that's how they control that right um mm-hmm. without having problems with um frequencies and being losing connections to welders you know thirty thousand dollar arc welders that are running along a, a table cutting a two inch piece of steel or whatever it is i don't know I, yeah, but i i remember that's how Fataba got involved in this business with spread mm-hmm. spectrum and then Spectrum came along after JR and Horizon bought them out. And now um, Horizon and JR are kind of like, you know, JR is the main company, but Horizon then took over Spectrum. And it, JR is like done pretty much. I mean, a lot of guys are saying JR is done. I mean, it, it's sad to see them go, but, you know, you said yeah. screw FPV. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> you you the dumbass. You okay. you you bet wrong. I mean that's that's pretty much like you know. I thought rock crawlers was gonna be crap. <laughs> <laughs> Turns yeah. out I was wrong. You know. Yeah. So you know yeah. we gamble when we make decisions, but but um, anyway, with Spectrum, with Fataba, with you guys, you can go online. You can update your flight con- your your radio. You can get new options. You can, you know, you guys have plans for the future of being able to talk to the flight controller through the radio and doing, make, making changes, VTX changes, all those things. Those are the things that we're all looking for, you know, in the future. Mm-hmm. So, like, I, I commend you guys on working in that direction. Like I said, I just don't want you guys to go too far outside the thing and start trying to think, make speed controllers and and motors and you know and all that and don't come out with a fry sky quad please don't don't do that don't don't, don't do that. <laughs> so now, getting back on subject so like what is you know free sky's uh outlook on uh you know racing in the fpv industry are they focused a lot on making sure that new products come out for that community or because i know you guys support you know all you know rc communities and stuff like that how important right. is you know like our little niche community um definitely free sky sees you know the potential in fpv and we know that we have gotten a lot of our most of our you know our our basis from fpv community so mm-hmm. we realize that it's a huge, huge industry for us and for RC in general, you know, because it's it's opening the door to the rest of the world into RC. So a lot of people who are getting into FPV are starting to discover, you know, fixed wing and helicopters and other mm-hmm. RC stuff out there. You know, they're like, wow, this is fun. So we, we definitely, um, we're kind of staying away from racing. I mean, we're, 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 we're definitely sponsoring races and, you know, you know, throwing our name out there, making sure that our name is out there with racing. But mm-hmm. it's really not our main focus. Our main focus is um, the feedback from the customers. We just want to mm-hmm. make the best product. And we know that the racers are going to use that if it's the best product, you know. And right. All of that feedback is going to come from the community and the racers themselves. So, um, you know, we're not like going hardcore into racing and sponsoring races and you know so we're just kind of there in the background you know Mm -hmm. um but recently i've been trying to get um a free sky to agree to sponsor pilots you know because we don't have any sponsored pilots we don't sponsor anybody yet so we are we are talking to pilots and just kind of seeing you know what our options are out there and what's the best way to sponsor a pilot you know Mm -hmm. can i (laughs) say one thing about that i just want to say one thing about that please please tell me please sponsor pilots that don't already have like a bunch of other radio spot no a whole bunch of other like there are people that have like it's like literally it's like wait a minute uh like this this company conflicts with this company but you but because he's a big name that they still do it and it's like yeah. I, yeah i'd like to see more pilots that are just as good with no sponsors get it because like on any given sunday like the top 100 can beat the other top 100 you know I, right. th- th- so That's true. like yeah. i just want to see more 
new pilots <laughs> get sponsorships. So, like, I see a lot of the same pilots get the more yeah. sponsorships, and it's like, yeah, so that's yeah, not helping like, the community at all. Like, no pilots that are sponsored by two companies, you know, like, you mm-hmm. know, yeah, I know what you're talking about. They have multiple companies sponsoring them, you know, like they got a motor company, they got a battery company. They no, got no, a no, company, not those right? guys. I mean, not that, those that's, guys? That's cool. I mean, uh, we understand that has to happen. You got it. I mean, every every pilot out there that's sponsored is supposed to have a motor sponsor, a speed controller sponsor, a frame sponsor, you know, or an electronic sponsor, you know, because there's some yeah. companies that handle all that, all of that, right? Yeah. But not all of them is going to, like, do radio the you know the receiver the you know flight controller all of that so i uh, we we totally understand that it's the guys you know i'll say it shit you know the, i know a guy that's sponsored by spectrum i know a guy who's sponsored by tbs i know a guy who's sponsored by another company that does long range you know the same guy the same so guy. They're the comp- same guy. Yeah. You know, so it's like, <laughs> it's like it's, I, I'm not even talking about that one. It's like it's like I know a few people that like they're sponsored by you know two different battery companies, and you're like, say what? True that. You know, it's like, <laughs> True wait a minute, weird. how does that yeah. work? You know, that's yeah. what I'm saying. You know, it's like I yeah, I, I want to see I more. Like I I want two. I just want to see more um, upcoming pilots get a chance to say to be sponsored. Yeah. That's it. That's what that that's all. Because I know yeah. like I know FR Sky is gonna come in, it's like, oh we want the DRL pilots and then like they already have like shitload of sponsors. Like sponsor. You're just like yeah. gonna be on list one hundred and ten or something. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know. No, no, I I agree. I agree. That's why we're looking for the special, you know, si- the special situations. We don't want to just sponsor anybody. Yeah. Like, like I, I, you know, like me, I, I think the R nine is awesome, and and uh, you know, and and uh, and uh, people should should reach out because I think that's 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 another thing because there's a lot of flying going on, guys. I mean, all over the world that you you really have no clue what's <laughs> going on. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, you know, outside of town, you know, like I, we just, me and a, a buddy of mine, we just watched some, some, uh, some, some back web flying, I guess you would call it. <laughs> back web. <laughs> dark web yeah. flying. Yeah, yeah, dark web flying, you know, uh, some, <laughs> there's some guys, guys flying in the, you know, in some big clouds and, and some yeah. big, big clouds, 10 miles of clouds moving, <laughs> you know, wow. and it's beautiful, you know. Yeah. But it's we can appreciate that because we know what it takes to get up there and be able mm-hmm. to maintain that kind of flight and and I I think there should be a lot more pilots experiencing what it's like to fly with some of those clouds outside of you know <laughs> the cities you know I mean you can get out there yeah. in the woods and outside of normal aircraft flight plans and and mm-hmm. you know we never had a flight. I, I didn't have back in back in ninety two, I didn't have a height where I could fly at. I didn't there was no height, you know. If yeah. I could see my ship, I could fly there, you know, as long as I wasn't chasing, you know, full scale aircraft, you know, and I, and I've done that too, you know, flown with a, a, a See, he's trying a to get fired bus. and get arrested no. this podcast. No, I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, 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 you just <laughs> I, I did this I did this ten years ago, but the, uh-huh. the guy Statue of Limitations is what you're trying to tell me. It, 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 um, that's the cool thing about it. Is the the um, crop duster guy is now an R C pilot and it's pretty fun because we talk now like that. Um but what I'm saying is uh-huh. Just have fun. Just right? yeah. I mean, there's all have kinds fun. of stuff to go out there and do, and you don't have to do it in the city. You know, there's there's a lot of. I I, I like mountain surfing, so that's what I like. Pretty cool. That, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, let's start wrapping up here. So <laughs> because like he's gonna ramble on forever, and we're cl- getting close to two hours. Damn it. Uh, I, I can talk about all kinds of stuff. Yes, I know oh, you yeah. can. But uh, we got to be respectable about Sven's yeah. <laughs> time. So, Sven, 
where can uh, people yes. like you know where can they reach you on the RC groups? Like you know where where are the places you hang out that people can talk to you? Um, direct me uh, directly. Just message me from Instagram. That's how you can get a hold of me. Instagram on the on the free sky underscore RC. That's that's it. Sky. There you go. So if you want to talk to free sky, family, underscore, free sky RC. underscore RC. Check out their photos. I'm definitely interested in the X10 and also to just to see what the flight controller mm-hmm. looks like. Because if yeah, it's super I simple, know. I'm always interested in super simple. R9. What? Exactly. And R9. You're interested in that. <laughs> don't lie. R9, R9? Too. No, I don't fly long range. Maybe. Yeah, you will. <laughs> uh-huh. Not yet. Yeah. One of these days, I'm going <laughs> to get him a time down to a chair and make him, make him go five miles. Never gonna happen. <laughs> Never gonna happen. Maybe, maybe it'll happen. But uh, Sven, uh, great talking yes. to you. Love, love to you know know the history because uh, you definitely. I didn't realize you were you know that ingrained into the culture of, at the very beginning of racing because a lot of that stuff was kind of pivotal to where we're at today. And uh, you know, keep doing the good work over in Free Sky, Far Sky, something Sky. Thanks. Yeah, I'm trying to represent the people. You know. <laughs> So, appreciate talking to you. All right, we we are cutting out. Thank you so much, and have a good night. Have a good night, guys.